to week seven of the Marcadini Crochet Along. This week we are going to be working <coughs> this section right here, blocks 26 or 25, 26, 27, and 28. So we'll be working beside where we worked week six and on top of week three and a bit of week four. So I have my week six here on the side and I have my week three horizontal line. You can notice I've marked some of the stitch markers to help us place our first block. So for the first block, we are going to want to count on this horizontal line above week three. We want to count over <coughs> from the vertical line 13 loops and mark that stitch. And then count over four more loops and mark that stitch and that will be where we place the next vertical line as well. So the 13th loop over to mark <coughs> will attach behind this marked stitch between the 13th and 14th stitch. We'll pick up loops behind each of the 13 stitches across and pick up or connect to the first row of that vertical line. <coughs> and then we should have 15 loops on our hook and we'll work a regular return pass for this foundation row of block 25. So for block 25, we're going to be working uh, mostly with the purl stitch and the twisted knit stitch to make this cute little pattern here. Row two then, we will start with three purls, one twisted knit, five purl, a twisted knit, and three purl. So let's go ahead and work that. So we'll purl the first three stitches, one, two, and three, and then work one twisted knit. So remember we pull that loop over to insert our hook between <clears throat> the front and the back loop of that stitch. So there. See my back loop there and the front loop is pulled over to insert between for that twisted knit. Then five purl stitches, one, two, three, four, and five purl stitches, and then another twisted knit. and ending the row with three purl stitches. One, two, and three. Making the connection to the next row up on the vertical line beside week seven, and regular return pass. And that's row two of block 25. So you just need to continue to follow the chart, working the required number of purl stitches or twisted knit stitches, and have fun with that. We will be working a total of 27 rows. Remember each row when you pick up your loops will have 15 loops on the hook, and 27 rows. So if you wish to mark your 27th row up on this vertical line, that's a great idea to make sure you end on the right spot. So when you've worked all 27 rows for block 25, you'll want to make sure you do a bind off row across the top, finishing in that same stitch on the vertical row as you made your last row connection. So next we want to work a vertical line. We will attach our yarn behind this marked stitch just over from block 25. So remember we had marked four loops over. You'll pick up the four loops, so working in front of the bind off row, picking up those loops and connecting to the first row of block 25 
for six loops on our hook and work the regular return pass. And we'll just work 27 rows of this vertical line matching up with the 27 rows of block 25. We will not be working a bind off row for this vertical line. So when you have finished working these 27 rows, you can just fasten off and I'll meet you back here then. So just remember after you've worked the vertical line to fasten off but do not work a bind off row. So for block 26, we want to first find our starting stitch. So we want to count over 30 loops from this mark stitch where we started our vertical line. So you will count the loops on top of the block and the vertical line, but you will jump over the border edge. And then on top of block 16, you want to count 13 loops over from the edge of that vertical line. And that will be where we start. So we'll join in the back and pick up 30 loops across and make our connection and I'll meet you there. So for block 26 I joined behind in between that 13th and 14th loop <clears throat> from that vertical line and I picked up 13 loops and 4 over this vertical line and 13 more loops. So I picked up 30 loops, make the connection to the first row of a vertical line here so 32 loops on your hook and then we can work the regular return pass and this will be the foundation or the first row of block 26. Then for row 2 of a block 26 we will be making some cables again. So we will work several purl stitches first and then two knit stitches, some more purl and so on. I will show you the forward pass cables on these first two and then I'll work return pass cables for the next set of cables. So we'll start with eight purl stitches. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, and eight purl stitches, and then we'll work a knit stitch as well. So for the forward pass cables, we'll take those off the hook, put the knit stitch back on the hook, the purl fell to the back, and we cross it around behind to make our first cable. Then we'll knit in the next stitch and work a purl. And again, we'll take those two stitches off, the knit falls to the front, put the purl back on, cross the knit over to complete those first two cables. Then we'll work two more purl stitches, one, two, and another purl, and a knit, and then those two loops you would use to make a forward pass cable, another knit, and a purl, and those two loops for another cable. Two purl, one, two. Then we'll work another purl, and a knit stitch, and those two you would use for your cable another knit, and a purl, and those two would make a cable. And then we're ready to complete the row with seven purl stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven purl stitches. Join to the next row up on the vertical line. We'll have 32 loops on our hook. Then we need to take off those seven purl stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
and 7, and then I've reached the two loops that I need to use to make my cable. So this is the return pass cable. If you worked all forward pass cables, you can just finish a regular return pass. So for the return pass cable, that knit stitch will fall to the front, put the purl back on, the knit back on, the working loop back on. Then we'll pull through two and pull through two. And again, with these one stitch over one stitch cables, you don't need to add that chain one in between. Then we'll work another cable right away. The purl falls to the back, cross it behind, and put the loop back on. And we take off those two cable stitches, or cable loops. And then we'll take off two purl stitches, one, two. We've reached the next loops for our cable. Knit to the front, put the purl back on, knit back on, working yarn yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and we'll take the next two stitches to work that cable. One, two. Then we'll take two purl off. Now we've reached where I made the forward pass cables, so if you did not do them before, you need to remove the loops now and work two sets of cables. And then we'll remove the two loops of the first cable, the two loops of the second cable, and the remaining loops we will take off. Okay, so some small little cables to make an interesting design for block 26. So I'm just going to let you continue to work through this chart, watching carefully where you need to make your cables and you will have 12 rows at the end of this block and I'll meet you then. So when you've finished block 27, be sure to work the bind off row across ending in the same connection that we did on our vertical line and double checking that you've used 12 rows of that vertical line. Next we want to work a horizontal line on top of this block. So we're just going to join in back behind the border stitch, picking up a loop on each stitch across and connecting to the vertical line. So I attached behind the border, picked up 30 loops across, connected to the next row up on the vertical line for 32 loops on my hook. Then you can go ahead and work a regular return pass, regular return pass, plus two more rows of this horizontal line and you can work the bind off. Time to find your swatches and learn another new stitch. So today we're working on the Tunisian full stitch. It's very simple, we just insert the hook between stitches to pull up a loop. We need to work this in a two row pattern though to um, get the right effect. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So <clears throat> for the first one, um, we're going to sort of skip over this first loop and insert between the first and the second loop. So we're starting after our next loop. But so just work in between each of the loops, sort of in that space between, to pull up a loop all the way down the row, or if you're working it in a pattern, for the required number of stitches. We'll make the last stitch between this last stitch and the border stitch. And then we'll pick up our border stitch as well. Okay, so you should have, oops, there we go, 15 loops on your hook. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 15. Work re regular return pass. And then on the second row to even out where our stitches are placed and make sure we don't gain or lose any loops in the row, the second row will start between the border stitch or in front of the stitch we're working next. So just in between each of those stitches, but this is row two, so we're working in front 
of our working stitches. And at the end of the row, this is where we need to be careful. We do not work in between the last stitch and the border stitch, or we would increase our stitches. So we just pick up the border stitch for row two and work regular return pass. Again, you can just chain one at the end, work through one, or if you like to pull through two right away, whichever is your preferred way to start the return pass. Okay, so you continue to work a few rows of this, always working in a two row pattern. So this is back to the first row of the pattern. So this row one, we work behind or after the stitch we're working. So the next stitch would be stitch one. So we work after stitch one before the second stitch to pull up our loops. So the stitch itself is quite simple to do. It's just remembering which row of the two row pattern you're on as you're working this. So this was after the stitch. So we need to work after that one before the border stitch, pick up the border stitch, 15 loops on our hook. Regular return pass. And, reg and ready for the second row of this two row pattern. So this time we go in front of the stitch pick up a loop in between each of these stitches and then this is the row that's tricky at the end we work in front of that final stitch so do not add another stitch before the border stitch but pick up in the border stitch 15 loops on the hook and regular return pass so you can go ahead and work a few more rows of that to get used to that two row pattern. Remember the first row, we work behind the next stitch and in between the rest of the stitches, the second row of the pattern, we work in front of the next stitch. And that is the Tunisian full stitch. Block 27, you want to join your yarn just behind this horizontal line that we finished on the border stitch side and then pick up 30 loops behind all the way across and connect to the next row on the vertical line on this side. We'll have 32 loops on our hook and for this first row you can just work a regular return pass all the way down the row and I'll meet you back for row two. So for block 27, we're going to be using our new stitch, the Tunisian full stitch that we learned on our swatch practice. So we will start, first of all, with the purl stitch, TSS, and alternating those. Then when we get to the middle of the pattern here, we will work three full stitches and then alternate our purl and TSS stitches again. So we'll work that together, starting with a purl. So we'll start with a purl stitch and then a TSS stitch. We'll do that five more times. Purl, TSS, purl, TSS, purl, TSS, purl, TSS, and purl, and TSS. So that should be 12 loops plus our starting loop is 13 loops on our hook. We want to make one more purl stitch. And then we're going to work three full stitches. So that's in between the next three stitches. One, two, and three. And then we'll work a purl stitch. TSS six times again, purl, TSS, purl, TSS, purl, TSS, purl, TSS, purl. 
T is. And actually we need seven sets, so we'll work another pearl and end with the TSS. So that should be 31 loops on our hook. Connect to the next line, next row up on that vertical line for our 32 loops. And then it's just regular return pass for all of the rows of this block. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now this time for row three, we're going to start with the TSS stitch first and then a purl stitch. And we'll do six sets of those. So starting with the TSS, purl, TSS, purl, TSS, purl, TSS, purl, TSS, and purl. And one more set, TSS and purl. So now we're ready to make five full stitches. So the first row, just like on our swatch, we um, work just past the next stitch we were working in. For the second row, we're going to work just in front of that full stitch we made for one, two, three, four, and five. So you kind of alternate. One row is just past the stitch, the next stitch, and then the next row is just in front of the next stitch. And then you start with that purl stitch and TSS. After six sets of that, we will end with a purl stitch in that final stitch of this row and make our connection. Remember 32 loops on the hook, regular return pass. So the sides on either side of our full stitch will be making this honeycomb pattern with our combination of those purl stitches and TSS stitches, and then we'll have our design in the middle with the full stitches. Okay, so I'll let you continue to work through this chart. You'll have a total of 12 rows again, and do the bind off row at the end of the row, and I'll meet you at the end of this block. So as you're working at these rows of the full stitch in this block, you may find it helpful to remember that when we work row two or the even numbers, so two, four, six, eight, and so on, we will be working the full stitch just past the next stitch in the row. And then on the even numbered row, starting with row three, five, and so on, you would work the first full stitch in front of the next stitch. So that might be helpful to you to keep straight which row you're on as well. So then you go ahead and make your bind off row to complete this block. So now we're going to work a vertical line on the sides of blocks 26 and 27. So from our last marker or where we started our block 26, we will count over one, two, three, four loops. And that's the one that we will start. So we're going to join in behind that loop and then working in front of the bind off, pick up these four loops across. So you start in behind the stitch, pick up the four loops across in front of that bind off row, connect to the first row of block 26 for six loops on our hook, and regular return pass. Then we will just continue to work these short rows of the vertical line. We'll have 12 rows on this block, three more rows on the horizontal line, 12 more rows there for a total of 27 rows of the vertical line and I'll meet you at the top of that. So when you've worked the vertical line 
there should have been 27 rows in this vertical line. We do not fasten up, fasten off, but rather we continue to pick up loops across the top to work the horizontal line. So we'll pick up four loops across the vertical line, 30 loops across the top of this block. We'll ignore the, ba the uh, border stitch working over top or in front of those bind off row. We'll pick up the next four loops on that vertical line plus 13 loops on this next block and then you make your connection to the next row up on the vertical line. You should have 53 loops on your hook at this point. You'll work a regular return pass and then two more rows of TSS for this horizontal line plus work a bind off row. So for block 28, we want to count over from the border stitch of the vertical line. We want to count over one, two, three, four loops and then mark the fifth loop over. We will start attach in behind just before that marked stitch with our color for this block. We'll pick up 47 loops across but behind those bind off stitches make the connection to the next row up on this vertical line for a total of 49 loops on your hook. Then you can go ahead and work a regular return pass. So to work block 28 you're going to want to print off the chart. We have a two page chart again making a lovely design with cables with a center heart and two columns of cables on either side. I'm going to have you work row two by yourself right now. It's using TSS, some purl, and some knit stitches through the row. You'll notice on the chart that in between each of the side cables and that center section, there is going to be a column of two TSS stitches to divide the sections of this chart. So you go ahead and work rows two and the return pass. I'll meet you here to work rows three and four to get you started on the cables. And we'll go from there. So for round three, the first part we're going to work one TSS, two purls, two knits, and two purls, but we'll work these cables in the forward pass as well as we get to those, so I'll help you with that. So we'll TSS in one, the first stitch there, and work a purl stitch. Then we'll work a purl and a knit and we'll take those off the hook, the knit falls to the front, comes back on our hook, cross the purl behind for our first cable. Then we'll knit in the next stitch, purl in the next. Again, take those last two loops off, the knit falls to the front, purl goes on, cross the knit over for the second cable. Then we'll make one more purl stitch, followed by two TSS stitches. Then we'll make 12 purl stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve purl stitches. We'll work two, oh, sorry, it should be thirteen purl stitches. Then we'll work two knit stitches. And then 13 more purl stitches. One, two, three, four, and 13 purl stitches two TSS, five, 
followed by two purl two knit two purl and three TSS to finish that row. We'll make our connection to the next line up or the next row up on that vertical line and begin our return pass. So when we get to this first little bit of the chart, I'll show you the cable in the return pass. So we'll take off those first three TSS stitches and the next purl stitch. Then we'll take off three loops, the knit falls to the front, put the purl back on the hook, cross the knit to the hook, and the working yarn back on, yarn over, pull through two loops twice and finish that cable. Then we'll take the next few loops off, the knit stitch back on the hook, purl crosses, working loop back on, yarn over, pull through two twice to finish that cable and then you can finish off the regular return pass. Now remember if you did not work the forward pass cable to make sure you work those cables when we get to the end of row three. So you can go ahead and finish the return pass for row three and I'll join you for row four again. So we're ready to work row four now. So TSS in the first stitch and a purl stitch. Knit stitch two purls so that knit stitch should have fallen in the knit stitch of the cable of last round the two purls on the inner parts of the cables and then knit stitch in this knit of the cable from last round and a purl and then we have reached our two TSS stitches so we'll work those Then we want to purl the next 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Then the next four stitches will be our first cable, so two purls and two knit. One, two purls and then oh, and then two knit and then we want to take those four loops off the purl stitches go to the back we put the knit stitches back on and grab the purl stitches if you wish you can use your stitch holders to work that cable if you're comfortable with your fingers you can do that as well and then well, the next four stitches would be the next cable so two knit and two purl. I'm going to work this cable in the return pass. If you're working forward pass cables, use these last four loops to work the cable now. And then we'll work 10 purl stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we'll have reached our two TSS stitches work those two TSS then a purl 
and a knit, and that should be in the knit stitch of the cable, so be careful that we don't grab that purl stitch that's crossed behind, so knit in the knit stitch, and then two purl stitches, those inner two of the cable, which can be a little tricky to find sometimes, and then knit in that next knit stitch. A purl, ending the row with two TSS, and connecting to the next row up on that vertical line. Remember at this point you should have 49 loops on your hook, and then you will begin the return pass. So if you worked all forward pass cables, you can just do regular return pass. You will want to add that chain one in between the two stitches <coughs> of the cable. So working the return pass cables with me, we'll take off those two TSS stitches and the purl. The knit stitch, two purls, knit stitch, a purl, and then the two TSS. Okay, and then we have <coughs> the 10 pearls to take off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then we've reached the four stitches we need for our cable, which should be two pearls and the two knit stitches. So for the return pass cable, we pull those five loops off the hook, so the working loop plus the next four loops. Purl stitches fall to the back. We put them back on our hook. Grab those knit stitches, put them back on the hook, and working loop back on the hook. Then we take off those two knit stitches, add the chain one, and take off the two purl stitches for our return pass cable. And then we've reached the next cable, so if you're working this one in the return pass, you will take off your working loop and the next four loops and do the cable. And then we'll re work the return pass. So we take off those two loops. Oops. There it is. Add the chain one and take off the two knit stitches of the cable. And then we can just do regular return pass the rest of the row to complete row four. Here we go. So I'm going to let you continue to work through the chart watching carefully where you have the cables on the sides or the cables in the middle. And I will check in with you again somewhere around row 17, um, somewhere up towards the top of the heart. I will check in with you. So again, you're going to be working a total of 42 rows. Great idea to put a stitch marker every 10 rows to help with your count and up the 10 rows on um, the vertical line to make sure we end up in the correct spot up there. So go ahead and I'll meet you back here in a little bit. So I have finished row 18. You should see your first heart shape in the middle with this lovely honeycomb design in the center of the heart. The one thing I thought of as I was working to point out to you is on this first several sections, we are alternating. We're doing the cables in these far columns, and then the next row, the heart so it alternates back and forth. But when we get up to round 15, the cables are all in the same row for the side columns as well as the heart cables. And we continue that for the rest of this first page. And into the second chart, but when we get up to row 25, it starts to alternate the cables again. So just watch for that carefully. and I hope you're enjoying working this. I love the hearts. So you continue to finish up this first page of the chart and then remember to have the second page handy to finish the third, the second heart and then the third heart. So good luck with that and I'll meet you back here at the end of the chart which is row 42.
So we want to work this vertical line again, now beside block 28. So you will attach behind the border stitch, and then working in front of those bind off stitches, we will pick up the four loops, attach to the first row for six loops on our hook, regular return pass. So you just work 42 rows for this vertical line. And then when you get to the top, if you're making the small size blanket, you will bind off your vertical line and stop there. But for medium and large sizes, we're going to continue across and make the horizontal line. So we'll just reach in front, or we'll just pick up the four loops on this vertical line and then pick up loops behind, all those 47 loops behind, and then connect to the next row of this vertical line there. So we can get started at that. So you should have picked up 53 loops across once you've made your connection to the vertical line. You can work the regular return pass and two more rows of TSS and bind off. 